What's up students, it's Aaron and welcome to week number two of our new series called Red Flags, Respect and Relationships. And over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be navigating the conversation of relationships. We're gonna be navigating the conversation of sex, dating, and really talking through our desires and uh, really pointing out there are some things that we experience and some things that we feel um, that we need to talk about. And I just believe that this is a safe place, that when you go to your small group, that when you go to your church and to our church, um, it's a safe place for us to have and navigate these conversations. Now. When it comes to your desires, I, I get it. Things can be a little bit unclear uh, because you're learning, you're growing, um, and that's why it's important for us to process this together. Now, I, I know you guys see this right here, and I, I just want to tell you that um, I am a former gamer. Uh, I, I'm a former gamer, um, and, I, that, and I use that word former because... Um, I realized that I have become to have a problem. Now this is a Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch is pretty cool and I love the Nintendo Switch because it, it just allows me to play a lot of different games a, a lot of different ways. Now I've been playing games for a little while and so I can go back to the Sega Genesis days, uh, the Nintendo days, the cartridge that you had to blow in, you know what I mean, when it didn't work. I'm talking about the original PlayStation all the way up to PlayStation 5. Like, I've been through it all. And, and what I realized is that I, I just love games. I mean, I'm a big sports guy, and so I, I love to play 2K and Madden, um, and there's some other games that I enjoy. I mean, Mario is, is, is just a real classic, whether you play Mario Kart or Mario Brothers. I mean, it's I'm talking about the legit classics. Now, I, I do have to admit, though, um, that there was a moment where I realized that I can never play video games ever again. And, and it was a moment that um, I, I was playing video games for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours. I'm talking about I was playing video games so long that I literally forgot about some of my responsibilities. Now, when I was younger in middle school, high school, playing video games, it was a breeze. I enjoyed doing it. But, but when I became a dad and an adult with responsibilities, I literally remember I was playing video games so much that I, I forgot some really big responsibilities. Like I, I was so immersed in what I was doing that I said, you know what, somebody else can take care of that. And, and I just want to like have some, some me time. And, and me time became way longer than it probably should have. And, and maybe you know what that feels like because maybe you're a gamer and, and maybe you love the game that you play or the system that you play. Um, and, and maybe things are cool now, but I, let me tell you from firsthand experience, for me, I'm a former gamer because this bad boy right here, it, it became what we call uh, a red flag. Um, because there is a difference between things that we're passionate about and things that we're obsessed about. Th th there's a big difference. And, and I have a unique passion. I, I legitimately have a passion for video games. I legitimately have a passion for just having a little bit of me time and doing some of the things that I love. And this is just one of the things that I love. But what I discovered about myself is that the thing that I love, if not carefully process, and if I'm not paying attention, it could become an obsession. And what I'm saying today is that an obsession is a red flag. Now, uh, maybe you feel the same way uh, when it comes to, or maybe you don't feel the same way when it comes to the video games that you play. Um, but maybe in some other areas of your life, you, you can kind of see this play out. That, that if you play a video game, for hours upon hours, you, you can see how maybe some of the other things that you're responsible for, it it's kind of gets neglected. Maybe it's homework that gets neglected. Maybe it's a responsibility that your parents want you to do. Maybe that gets neglected because something that you love and has become a passion, like me, has could very well and easily have become an obsession. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today because um, there's nothing wrong with just being passionate about certain things. I'm pretty sure if we just asked and interviewed you, there's a lot of things that you would be passionate about. But 
The problem starts when our passions become our obsessions. Now, now here's the thing. A passion is a love and excitement for something that doesn't cause us to ignore everything else in our lives, right? And, and maybe you can be passionate about sports or, or maybe you can be a passionate about gaming or, or maybe you could be passionate about food or, you know, there's a lot of different things that you could be passionate about. But those things in and of itself doesn't cause us to ignore other parts of our lives. But then things can turn into deception and they can turn into obsession. And here's what an obsession is. Obsession controls our thoughts, our, our uh, motiv motivation, and our actions. It takes over many parts of our lives. And, and there are times when the things that we desire, the things that we love, the things that we're excited about can literally take over the thing that we're motivated about and motivated for, which is why we just need to pay attention to this. Because especially when it comes to our desires, especially when it comes to relationships, especially when it comes to even the thought of sex and the idea of sex, um, it, it can really become an obsession. And, and we know that in those areas of our lives, um, those things can really be destructive when they're an obsession in our lives. Right. So so an obsession can impact us in a lot of different ways and it, and it impact not only you, but it impacts the different relationships that you have in your life. So maybe you can think of some things that maybe can easily become an obsession. Maybe you can think of some things in your life that, hey, if you really was to process this and pay too much attention to this or allow this thing to control you, it could become more of a red flag than anything else. Now, the reason why I talk about this is because um, there's some truth to this. God has something to say about our desires. God has something to say about the things that we experience every single day. And, and I'm not just talking about the things that we love, but um, especially in the context of relationships, because it, it is such a, a, an important area of our lives that we have to pay really close attention to. Now, I want to read to you what Paul says in his letter to other Christians. Now, he wasn't specifically talking about dating. He wasn't specifically talking about relationships. He wasn't specifically talking about, you know, our desires and the idea of sex. But um, he gives us this thought and this principle that we can apply in every area of our lives, especially in the topic that we're talking about this month. And here's what he says. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. He says, I am allowed to do all things, but not everything is good for me to do. Even if I am free to do all things, I would not do them if I think it would be hard for me to stop when I know that I should. That, that is a powerful statement that Paul writes to a group of Christians that he's trying to encourage them. And, and, and here's the thought. Here's the bigger picture. The bigger picture is that whatever you have a passion for, whatever your desire is in life, and as your desires change as you grow, whatever that is, our goal is to honor God with our desires. And one of the beautiful things that God has ever done for us is that he has given us freedom, which is why Jesus died for our sins, so that we could experience what freedom actually looks like and feels like. But even with that freedom, Paul says, even though I'm free to do whatever I want, um, I shouldn't do anything that would harm. Right. Even though I'm allowed to do all things, this is literally what he says. Everything is not good for me to do. So here's what that means. Here's a question that, that you should ask yourself. And here's a question I'm asking you. What are you doing with the freedom that you have? What, what are you doing with the freedom that, that God has given to you freely? He's given it to you. Are we using that freedom to choose our desires and allow our desires to decide the decisions that we make? Are we choosing our freedom to just do whatever we want in life? I mean, is that really the most helpful thing? Or can we use our freedom for a much better reason? Can we use our freedom in a much better way? And that's really what Paul is talking about. He's really encouraging us to use our freedom in the right way, in a way that actually benefits us, 
in a way that honors God, that honors God most. Right. And so when you think about whatever desire you have in your life, I, I probably can tell you whatever desire that is. Um, most of them, they're not bad desires. I mean, like if you see a girl and, you know, she looks a little pretty. Right. Or if you like have a little crush. Right. Because that just happens in middle school and high school. We know how that feels. And let's just be honest, like that. That's not a bad thing to have. Because that's the way that God created us. However, and it's a big however, the, the, the however is when we allow that desire to overtake us and to control us, then we live our life with a bunch of red flags. We live our life in obsession versus passion. I, I hope this is making sense. Um, I, I like what Jesus says in John chapter 10. And again, it is how we should live our lives in relation to what God has done for us. This is what Jesus says. He says, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it to the full. Now, here's what I can tell you about the obsessions that we experience in life and the desires that can become obsessions. When we allow our desires to become obsessions, it will empty our lives. It will drain us to the point that we have nothing to give. We have nothing good to offer. If you spend all of your time gaming, if you spend all of your time obsessing over a crush or obsessing over a guy or obsessing over a girl, if you spend all of your time thinking about those things, then th th you have nothing to give because an obsession empties us out. It drains us. But Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it to the full. In other words, when we use our desires to honor God best, then we can live a full and rich and meaningful life. And that's what God wants for you. He, he wants you to experience a full life. He wants you to experience a meaningful life. And so part of choosing to honor God with your desires, part of choosing integrity when it comes to relationships, integrity when it comes to sex, integrity when it comes to dating or the idea of dating. Uh, part of that is not doing the things that we know aren't good for us. And it, it, it is just as simple as that. Not doing the things that we know that are not good for us, even though you might have the freedom to do those, to do those things. So, so here's what I want you to think about. If we want to live life free and full the way that God wants us to, we need to be honest and we need to get honest where we might be letting obsession take over. So, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to take inventory of your own life, of your own desires, and I want you to recognize what are the red flags in my life? What, when it comes to the things that I'm passionate about or maybe the things that I have a desire about, what about those desires can be a red flag. What about those desires can easily turn into an obsession if I don't pay attention to it? Um, the second thing that I want you to think about is respect. I want you to think about the boundaries that you need to create in light of the things that could become an obsession. It, it, the things that you watch, things that you listen to, can it become an obsession? And so what are the boundaries? How can you respect yourself, respect God, respect others enough to place a boundary in place so that you can live your life in honor of him? And then I want you to think about the relationships that you have around you. I want you to acknowledge the negative effect, a negative effect that an obsession can have on the people that are closest to you. I want you to think about how an obsession will affect your relationship with your parents. How an obsession will affect your relationship with maybe the friends that you have around you, the people that are important to you. Um, as we close out this conversation for this week and continue it next week, I want you to continue the conversation with the trusted small group leader. I want you to continue the conversation in community. And here's what I want you to know more than anything else, that God does care about you. And he has created you with incredible value and he wants you to see the value that he's created you as. God cares about what we do and he cares about what we do with our freedom. We do not have freedom to do what we want, but God has given us freedom to do what we should. Let's pray about it. God, thank you for this reminder 
that we all have desires and we all have things that we're passionate about. God, would you help us determine how our passions can easily become obsessions and would you allow us to put the guardrails and the boundaries in place so that we can always honor you no matter what desire we have. In Jesus' name, amen.